Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Suresh Krishnan, Chief Architect with the Persistent Systems and the Head of Technology with the Intelligent Business Automation. And today I have Devon and Prakash from Carlyle, and they have joined us to talk about that IQR automation, what we have done, like and how we have done at Carlyle. So how, how was our journey from the task to process to the hyper automation? So before we start, uh, just a couple of introduction slides about like and persistent. Uh, so we are persistent. So we have been doing like in software implementation for 30 plus years, and like and we are marching towards like in 1 billion, and we are like in growing like an year on year of 30 uh, percent, and like and we have like in close to like in 17,000 employees. So with IBA, which is like an intelligent business automation, so like and we have been working with Appian for last like in 15 plus years, and we started as a customer like and to build one of our own product, and then like and we become a partner, and then we become an like an OEM equipment engineer as well like in product engineering. So we do a lot of like in connectors and like in for Appian, and we have been rated as like an uh, leaders in Forrester, and like and we have been like and rated by like the winners in the ISG consecutively for like in last like in two three years, and we have like a dedicated center of excellence like and across the globe. So I'll skip through a couple of these slides, and this is for like and I just wanted to ask Duan and Prakash to talk about Carlyle. So uh, my name is Devon Daniel. I've been uh, at Carlyle for about eleven about eleven years, um, and throughout my tenure here at the firm, we've seen tremendous growth. Um, we have about 1,800 employees, uh, 26 different offices across five different continents. Um, we have about 301 billion assets under management uh, between those three sectors or segments that you see on the, on the presentation there. And um, we have, within those three business segments, we have about 456 different investment vehicles. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of ability and a lot of opportunity to automate um, because of the data, just the sheer size of data that we're, that we're seeing. Uh, I'm Prakash, Prakash Prabhu. Uh, I lead the product on this technology. Uh, work closely with Devon and Suresh here. Uh, some of the major IT initiatives that we are embarking right now is what you see here, the cloud transformation is something we are very actively working on now. Um, data modernization, right? How do we move, leverage the cloud power for the data? That is something we are very actively working on too. We'll talk more about the last one, the process automations. Uh, we have about like 16 ad active applications in Appian now. So we're going to talk more about that in the upcoming slides. So the hyper automation journey, so how we started, like and so Carlyle started that like an Appian journey in like in 2016 or 2017. So that's where like and they were doing a lot of like and uh, the vendor like and looking at like and who can provide that kind of a capability to build some kind of an enterprise wide applications. So that's where like and they started like and initially looking at like and more of like in task automation. Like and there were a lot of like in processes in the Excel based where they wanted to automate just like and bring those kind of an technology instead of filling the forms in that Excel, they wanted to start with the task automation in Appian, and then take it to the next level, which is like in process automation. So that's where like in 2020 or 2021, like we started more of doing like the process automation. Now we are in the stage of like an hyper automation. So we have done the task automation, the process automation, the next step is the hyper automation. So the applications, like and you can see the accounting action center, like and what we have built is more of like in getting the data from the multiple data streams, and like in getting the data from the multiple data sources, and having that the rules engine behind that, and that's where like and we try to automate like the end-to-end -end process for the business, so that way like and they don't have to like and sit and like and do these activities manually. Instead, like and they can take like the end-to-end -end process like and within a minutes. Do you want to talk about? So um, throughout the throughout the you know uh, of this year, uh, we have tremendous amount of goals for the firm. Uh, two of the goals that we had that I'm going to focus on is kind of accelerating growth within specific business segments, as well as um, is that better? Okay, there you go. Now I, I talk with a mic now, man. All right. uh, <laughs> didn't practice this one. Um, so. Where I was at uh, in building, building for the future. So those are the two goals. The two goals, and um, Appian provides us that the the tools to, to reach those goals. And what you'll see on what you're looking at right now is kind of where we are from an Appian use. The light gray is representing segments within the business that we're leveraging Appian, um, and the dark gray is leveraging uh, opportunities where we see we can use Appian. We just haven't we haven't got there yet. Um, my team within Carlisle handles the fund accounting piece. 
um, which is there's two different kind of sides of accounting within the firm. There's a firm level accounting and an investor level uh, accounting as well. And my team handles a lot of the applications that our partnership accounting team uses. Um, we created an application, one of our, I wanna say second applications, and I think it's one of the most mature applications was uh, the capital call and distribution process. Um, for those that don't know capital calls, you know, as, as our firm or our deal teams invest in deals, we need to call capital from our investors. And when those deals do mature, we actually send distributions out to those investors. And that process was tremendous, tremendously manual. Um, it was a lot of handoffs here and there. People were kind of swivel chairing data from one, one system to another system, a lot, very error prone. And we're, we were using mail merge. And I, I'm not sure if you guys know it, but word mail merge we're using to send investor level data to our investors to know how much money they're getting or how much money we need from them. And that process, again, tremendously manual and error prone. So we built a process that took that on, we built a process within Appian to take that whole process from beginning to end um, and, and, and automate it. Uh, we, all the document generations is coming out of Appian. All the process flows are, are in Appian. The three different you know, teams that interact with it are all within Appian and, and moving that data through. So you'll, you'll uh, in a future slide, you'll see some of the KPIs around that process. But again, something that was tremendous manual, we actually were able to automate within Appian. Um, another slide or another section that I wanna talk about is the reporting and analytics piece. Um, we, and this is a more, not, not, as, not as mature as the, as the capital call and distribution process, but from an accounting actions, we, we built kind of a central hub for all our accounting users to, to log in and do their work. At a given day, our accounting team, staff team, would have to go through six or seven different applications to get the data they needed to book their entries. Um, we've all now created a hub where the users will log in and see all that data in one spot. I don't have to go through you know, Salesforce to get information about my investors. I don't have to do you know, go to my ERP that, to push payments out to our investors. That's all being done centrally within Appian. So um, a lot of, again, we, we're still maturing. We're still, there's a lot of applications. And that, that application that we just released about a year ago is seeing tremendous uh, efficiency. I think, your, I think your mic works. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, thanks, Juan. So what are the areas we are working on to scale, right? So the very first thing we are right now focusing is the cloud journey. So as a firm, we initiated this uh, roadmap of how to migrate to cloud. Why is the benefit? What are the applications we should do like a couple of years back? Uh, primarily right now we are focusing on taking our app in instance to cloud. And the partnership accounting platform, also we are trying to migrate to our private cloud. Um, with an app in two, we truly want it to be hybrid because the data, the transactional data for Carlisle is still going to reside in our private cloud. And we have figured out a way to make this work with Appian Cloud without impacting the user experience or any performance issues now. So this was a major initiative. Still, we are working on it. Uh, we'll be live with it in like next quarter. Uh, next, like, uh, maybe Suresh, you want to take that? These are all the components of an hyper automation, right? So what we thought, okay, yeah, like an, we have an on-prem environment, so like an, is it scalable? No, like an, okay, we have to move to the cloud. And that is the journey that we started now. The next one is like the plug and play kind of an architecture that we wanted to bring in, especially like an, we have like a DocuSign connectors and we have like a document generations and we have like a, some of the solutions that we have built in like an where which can be shared by multiple applications. So those things that we have built in more of like a plug and play, so that's like, we have 16 applications and these are all like a huge applications, every application they wanted to leverage some of these capabilities of these plug and play kind of accelerators. And then the integration is another the key thing, actually. So we have like the treasury applications, which is the PeopleSoft ERP, and then we have like the system of record for the investors, which is on the sales force, and then we have like the investment module, or maybe like the accounting module, which is the investor. So all the books and like journal entries, everything is like fed into the investor. So we need to have a platform which can be orchestrated and which can be like and talking to this multiple like uh, the uh, system of record and get the data and provide that like the user like the process the seamless users so that's where like and Devon was talking about the accounting action center where they don't have to go to like and log into multiple systems like and where we try to bring all the data also we did an automation so we were we built a complete like the rules engine within Appian 
So, and also like, and we have built some of like, and, uh, the engines in the database. So that way, like, and we try to automate like a lot of process where they used to do in manually, like in booking the entries, posting the entries. So all these are recurring entries. So these are all some of the things we found it like, and could be an uh, opportunity for automation where like they don't have to spend a lot of time. So we completely, the end-to-end -end process has been automated by getting the data from the multiple systems, automatically booking the journal entries, finding out like and what GL has to go for, what are the transcribe it has to book for, so what stages it has to go, like and, and then we have built like a kind of a, the health checks, like an okay, hey, if you have to book the entry, what are the different health checks it has to go through? So the, all those, the rules engines that we have put in. Yeah, I think that's a single dashboard yeah. like we have now, right? So like all of our fund, fund onboarding happens in Salesforce, investor onboarding happens in Salesforce, like right from there till like the C2DS distributions, uh, how we, send the distributions and call for the funding from our investors and the accounting entries that happens in the end and then how we generate our financial statements. So this is a one hub where our users can monitor how things are progressing, right? They don't have to do it to different systems. And it has to be real time, right? Especially during quarter close, like, you know, this is very busy system. Uh, this is another actually reason like cloud, like we want to have really high level environment. Right. Yeah, another thing while we are scaling, we also thought about like and we wanted to go to like go with the frequent upgrades. So that's why like and we started bringing in that kind of an automated DevOps. So that means like an okay, hey, yeah, we have 16 applications, every upgrade, we cannot wait for like a one month, two month of upgrade cycle. So how we can scale up that like the automation, right? So that's why like and we brought in like the QA automation. So like and we have automated like and both that like uh, uh, the performance automation and also like the QA automation for all those 16 applications. So that way, right, like and whenever like and we are going for a major upgrade and even whenever we are going for a major release, we try to run that and making sure that all those like the test cases are like and cleared before we move into the production. So that is another area that we have heavily focused on and we are currently working on like and finding out all the business use cases which are like and qualified for that the functional testing. So that's one area that it's being heavily focused. So the last one is the process mining again. Uh, while we are onboarding any new project into Appian, so we always go through this kind of a process mining. So right now, yeah, I know like and we have like and uh, there are some existing systems where we are trying to like in legacy systems where we are trying to migrate. So we know that like and what needs to be migrated, but there are some process. Uh, which are still manual. So those we do some kind of a little discovery, design thinking session with the users. We do like an having regular kind of a, um, uh, the interview kind of a sessions with them. Uh, and then like and we come up with a kind of a prototype or a mock-up and that's where like and we go and present it. Okay, hey, is this what like you have? Like and is this the task that you wanted to be a high priority? Uh, is this what like and you wanted to have the process? Do we think that these processes are kind of a duplicate. Do you want to eliminate? Or we think that this process can be automated. We don't need like and you don't have to come and and again, redo it everything. So that's where like and we figured out and we automated like and so that's one of the key thing, the process mining. Uh, I know like and Matt talked about this morning. So that's more of like systematic. But what we have done is more of a discovery. But the next phase like and definitely we are planning to use that the process mining and see if that can be helpful for us actually. Okay, so th this is like a slide like you know I and Suresh talked yeah. the most about. Uh, so back in days in 2017 to 2019, we had like two applications, right? Uh, C2DS being one of them, which is a tier zero application. It can be like, you know, it can impact like, you know, uh, big impact to Carlisle, right? Like we are sending cash out to investors, bringing cash in that could delay like our deals, right? So it's a tier zero application that needs to be live all the time. And then we had a vision this was going to be impact, uh, applied in other areas, legal and compliance, tax, entity creations, right? So we had the vision to expand this, but what really was happening is like, you know, the way they created this components was siloed for each application, at least for the two we had. So that's when we took a step back and thought about like, what are the components that could be standardized here? So how do we maintain this? What is the governance around sharing that with others, right? So there was a need to create this team, a centralized team. When I say centralized team, it's not like, you know, three or four people sitting there getting a rubber stamp approval from them, no. So it's about the framework of how to engage others to collectively come up with a common framework that we all can use. So, so that is something we started around in like 2019, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then it's been working fantastic for us. So everyone can collaborate. So if the, we have a clear guidance and documentation of what are the shared components, and if anything needs to change to that, like you know, it's a collaborative work. 
So people can like, you know, clearly see, hey, these are things already there, let's plug and play and use this, right? So it's been like very helpful for us. Uh, some of the other items benefits ratio is important. Yeah, the main agenda for the COE is basically we have 16 applications and there are like a multiple teams and each of these teams, they work in silos, they follow a different patterns, they follow a different process and we wanted to eliminate because we have a users, they are like a common users across all the applications and they get a different like an user experience. When you log into the application A, they have a different user experience. When they log into the application B, then they see that, okay, hey, here like an, okay, it's instead of a button, they have a checkbox. So why is that? So that was one of that, um, when we add that process mining or the discovery session with the users, that was one of the like biggest concern that, okay, hey, applications are not consistent. So that's where we thought, okay, we need to have a kind of a framework which is a COE come in, establish that kind of patterns or best practices, making sure that every application follow this like and regress uh, the filtering process, making sure like and all the UIs are consistent across all the applications. Any application is building a new process or a new like and uh, uh, solution, making sure that like it's already implemented. They don't want to reinvent the wheel again. So we just wanted to make sure that like and they do that. Same thing, we wanted to bring in that kind of the governance and the guideline making sure that like an all application follow all the standards, okay? Uh, quick, oh, quick, sorry. Yeah, quick thing on that. So also um, from the COE perspective, it and, and Suresh kind of kind of tapped on it, is the consistency across the UIs. Um, you know, I, I deal mostly with business users. Um, you know, these guys are, are, the, are the technical gurus, but um, you know, to have to release an application and to have to go through another round of training because the UIs may look different than what the other UIs they've used within that within 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 the application. Um, COE has been, we've been able to kind of stabilize that and, and standardize that across all applications. So I don't we don't have to have these big rollouts and big training efforts to get people to understand what the system is doing. So um, that that's really one of the big advantages from a business side we're seeing as well. Uh, so Here's uh, some of the KPIs that were mentioned earlier from the capital call and distribution process, mainly because that's the biggest number that stands out there. We were able to actually automate, uh, we we're actually able to decrease the processing time from a week and a half from, a, for, from you know, beginning to end of a capital call and distribution process to about an hour. Um, and that's Appian handling all the document generation um, and all the sending of the applications to, or sorry, sending of the, of the data and, uh, documents to LP Connect, which is our portal on Appian as well. So, um, you know, that, that's a true number. That's not an inflated number. And, and it's, just, it's just getting widely used within the firm. So that's probably, I would say, one of our most successful applications that we have built on Appian. Um, and, you know, as, as a firm, we always want to also close, you know, get our close process down to, you know, specific amount of days. Uh, we, were, we were able to accelerate with the accounting action center, um, uh, that process as well. So our users are not worrying about entering data, they're more worrying about analyzing data, right? And making sure that, hey, you know, this, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense instead of having to worry about, okay, I need to, I need to key this information in and have to have my manager review it. Um, we've been able to automate some of those processes is about, uh, in the number right there, 50%. Um, so from an accountant standpoint, we're pushing in data into Appian and automatically posting those to our accounting system without a user having to interact with that, right? We're, we're using the rules that Persistent has helped us build from a rules engine perspective and being able to process things. And now I'm, on, I'm more of, a, I'm more of uh, allowing the users to analyze data and making sure that, hey, you know, they can future, see in the future what, 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 the, what the data is, what it's doing, um, and being able to predict in the future what, what we need to do. So, um, we've been seeing a lot of that, and, and Nick is one of our vice presidents in our partnership accounting team, and he's just seen better data integrity, a lot less errors in the data. That's because we're piping data over from using these APIs and not someone manually keying in data in one system and swivel chairing and keying in a different system. So he, he has a, uh, obviously great things to say. We have a couple, you know, just like everyone, we have bumps in the road here and there, but from an overall perspective, I think we're doing a great job. And um, you can talk about why we, why yeah, we chose that. So here. thanks, Juan. So why Appian, right? So today morning, Matt started with like agility. So yeah, this last three years, like even our processes has to change, like, you know, even like everyone else, right? Like we had to adapt to this new world that we all went through. And at the same time, we can't really wait too long. So that's when we came up with the roadmap, hey, let's look at the quick wins. Let's look at the low hanging fruits that we can quickly deliver and that worked out. Sometimes you were able to deliver 
a real working solution in like in a couple of weeks. Uh, that was a big win. Uh, really where we are now is like every three months, we are able to deliver a good value to the business, right? Without impacting what has been put in production already. Uh, so this is what, why we choose Appian for. Like it's, we are able to quickly adapt, quickly deliver solutions. And the main thing is without really like disturbing what we had delivered before. So that's the really like, you know, the highlights, like why I think we used Appian for. Okay, I think this is the future roadmaps. I think it's a pretty much summary of what we have been talking like you know, so long, right? Uh, right now, where we are is in the cloud journey, cloud migration, and the data modernization for rest of the year and through Q1 of next year. That's our goal. Uh, primary focus around all the business segment is going to be on that. Yeah, this is something like an uh, points to consider. Like, and I, I won't call it as a challenge. Just maybe like, and yeah, while we are doing that automation, okay, some of the things that definitely we have to consider. So one is like in calculating the return on investment. So I know like in the moment we get into automation, okay, hey, what is that ROI that we are going to get? But sometimes the ROI will be in the terms of like customer experience or a user experience or quality of our data. So those are all the things that we have to consider rather than just saying that, okay, hey, I have saved, saved eight hours, rather than, okay, hey, the data is now streamlined, the integrity of the data is good, the accuracy of the data is good, or the user experience, they are feeling really good actually. So they are feeling comfortable. So that's where like, and we have to see like, and how we can calculate that return on investment. Second thing is, the main thing is, selecting that, choosing that hyper automation infrastructure. So we have to choose the right automation platform. So what we have done in Carlyle, okay, so we know like an Appian as an enterprise platform, but also we also know that some of the stuff we wanted to take it to some the BI platform and some things like we wanted to move it to the RPA, which are best for that. And some of them like and we have like in document generations where we are using some of the third party like in good stuffs, we are using it. So we have chosen the right platforms. So choosing the infrastructure is critical. So we have to choose that the right platform for doing the right thing. Um, Third thing, yeah, mainly the business process, yeah, definitely, yeah, if you don't have a good data or a business, for existing business process, yeah, whatever the automation that we are going to do, it's going to end up in failure. So we need to have a right data. Without data, or first we have to streamline the data. Like, and if you want to get into an automation, first we have to streamline the data first and streamline the process, then we get into that hyper automation. Otherwise, yeah, like, and we will see the same problem what we have done before. And last thing is, like, and basically, yeah, um, sacrificing the customer journey that that means yeah we talked about the agility so sometimes the roadmap is going to be pretty long it's going to take like an one year or two year so at times like in during that period the business user they might have to log into the multiple system while we are building the other platform so that's where like and we might have to get in some kind of an the buy-in from that like the stakeholders making sure okay yeah like and this is going to be like a temporary gap until they see that like the full automation okay Open up for questions then. You mentioned um, about the governance and uh, citizen developers. Can you expand a little bit on that? So the governance you have and uh, the citizen developers uh, you are seeing, and how, how long does it Right, uh, so on the COA side, the governance definitely making sure that like, an, first thing is the certification, I would say like, an, even the uh, citizen, citizen developer or whoever the developer comes in, right? So they need to know the platform. So, so, so they have like a different level of certification, so they have to go through the certifications and they have to go through the, the best practices, like in every organization or maybe like in, we have put together the best practices. So they have to go through the best practices. That's the main thing. and. Without that best practices, they are not going to implement the right platform. So I, I would say like, yeah, they have to go through the certification and the best practices. So that way like, and you can put in the governance. So once they develop, like you need to have like a proper review process also. So like and where we are, right? So that also critical. Most of the times, yeah, we create the best practices, but we don't know whether they are following the best practices. So that's where like, and we need to have that the review process also embedded as part of your regular like and sprint deliverables. For a citizen developer, I would say like an, um, it, it depends like in two to four weeks. That's what I would say, yeah. 
like and but they need to at least they need to have some kind of a programming background or programming language not especially appian but at least they need to have like some kind of like the programming language or any other any other language if they know that it will be easy for them to just learn appian and start building the applications i think we're actually out of time so i mean we'll, we'll we can meet over here for any additional questions but um i appreciate you guys for joining us here uh, and if you guys have any questions, we'll be here. And then I think the booth number is 519. Yeah, 519. Yeah, yeah 519. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.